Today we're going to be talking about some strange things that went on in my life. But first I'm trying to make some cream of wheat. So I'm going to show you how I make mine. I have some hot water on my stove. I'm just going to put a little bit of salt in there. Now that the water is boiling, I'm going to pour some of my kuma wheat in there. And I'm going to stir it. And let it start to cook. I like to use a wooden spoon. I don't like to hear metal against metal when I'm cooking. So that's what I'm using. Now that it started to cook, I'm going to put some nutmeg in mine. And now I'm going to add some cinnamon. And give that a stir. I like to put carnation milk or pig milk in. This is what the pig milk is like. And I'm going to pour some in my cream of rice. I like light brown sugar in mine. So that's what I'm putting. If you don't have it, you can put white sugar, granulated. Or you can put some dark one, it don't matter. Or you can leave it without sugar and eat it. And continue to stir. It's almost ready. And we're going to go and have a talk. Cream of rice. It is ready. I love cream of rice, but I can't eat it all the time because of the carbs. But every now and then, I make myself a hot bowl and enjoy it. So let me put it in a bowl and I can start juicing you guys. So my cream of rice, I have it, it's so hot, so I can't eat it yet. But welcome to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time seeing my face, my name is Norma and you're welcome. And to all my returning subscribers, thanks for always coming back. So I'm going to tell you things that have happened to me, um, some of the things over the years, and in particular when I was taking care of my mom. So my mom had been um, very independent, and we were blessed to have her for almost a hundred years. And she lived almost 101 years but as she started to get in her 90s she started to get um, afraid in the night to stay at home by herself and she was living in her own place going about her business being great so I talked to my sister and we decided that we would go and take care of her and keep her in her own house so we decided we would go, um, she would go one week and I would go another week. And in a day we had somebody to take care of her, but so we could sleep there because we still had jobs that we had to go to. And we were very blessed because my older brother would come and sometimes he would relieve us for a month or because he lived out of state and we were local. Or sometimes he would stay for six weeks and then we got a break and we'll will start all over again and that happened for years so one night I was at her house and sometimes as she started to get older and she started to lose it a little bit she would get very disoriented and then she would start to see stuff my sister had passed away years before and one of my um, cousins had passed away and she would see them she would be like she would call their name and say oh they're trying to come for her and she would tell me or my sister to try to protect her so they couldn't take her 
and that's the other story she will be saying um and we will just say oh it's old age maybe because of dementia well one night she was very restless and she was talking let me eat some of my cream of rice mm. it is yummy So she didn't want to sleep, so I couldn't leave her. I had to go to work the next day, so I decided I would just um, download some music. So when I go to work that Saturday, I would play it. So somebody had given her an angel. It was because she didn't go out. So somebody, except we took her to the doctor, so somebody must have come to visit and brought that angel. It was a big one. It was made out of wood. When I saw it, I didn't like it, but she loved it. And I wish I had asked her who gave it to her. But it just made me feel funny when I saw it, but she would always say, oh, I love my angel. So in the night, we had it in her window so she could see in the day. But in the night, when she went to bed, I would close the curtain because I didn't want to see that angel for some reason. So that night, she was restless. And I put her in bed. I came and sat in the living room to record. And she kept coming. And then I would take her back to bed. And then she would wake up and get up. So finally, when I put her back to bed, the third time I decided, oh, I'll record some music. And so she had a dresser that was closer to the window. And it was kind of high. So the lady that used to take care of her in the day when she go grocery shopping, she would come and put money there. And then, you know, whatever change she has, and then uh, she will go back and forth, put the money and take it away. And then as my mom started to get more um, losing her mind, she stopped doing it. But there were three pennies that had been sitting on that table on the top of the dresser. You could see it, but you had to be tall to look at it. So that night, I turned my back to the window and I'm recording. And my mom had a glass table that was close to where the glass was. So I'm recording about, by then it was almost midnight. And I just hear something fall. And nobody's behind me. So I get scared. The curtain is closed. And when I turn around, the three pennies have rolled from the table that nobody had touched it had been there for a long time all three of them just rolled and fell on the glass and when i saw that i thought i was going to die i was so afraid i looked around the apartment my mom was in bed she was sleeping and i'm like what am i gonna do it scared me so much i told you some crazy stuff has happened to me it took me back Years ago, when I was so when I was young, those days when someone died, I guess they still do it in certain countries, but where I'm from, Liberia, when someone dies, most times they will bring the body home and for the wake. And all night the body will lay in state in the living room or in the dining room. People will come and sing and we have wake biscuits and all night. And then the next day they would take them for the service and bury them. So I remember distinctly, I was a child, but I remember distinctly when they brought my dad um, and he was laying there in the living room. They had the glass open and I could smell the Famadaha. It was so strong. And, and that happened years, I was a child and when I got older and got married, I remember one day I was laying in my bed. I was pregnant with my first daughter. Nobody was in the house. My their dad had gone to work and I'm just in the house, in the bedroom. And all of a sudden, I just started to smell the Farmada High. And it just got stronger and stronger and stronger. I got so spooked that I ran out of the house and I stayed outside on the bench until that dad got home, when we went in the house, the scent was gone. Just mysteriously, and that's the way I felt that night. So
so I call uh, my kids and of course it was late so they were sleeping I'm like but at this hour who do I call and I can't leave my mom so what am I gonna do I just have to sit there so I could not sleep that night in the morning I get up um, I go to work so I come back to the house and the next day everything was okay I was scared but everything was okay two weeks later there's a friend of mine that used to live in the building so a lot of times I would cook on Saturday evening because Sunday I didn't work and I would call her and say oh what are you doing she's home come and eat with me so that day I came home and I will usually go shopping before I come home to cook. But I came home that day and I look in the freezer. I was going to make some fufu and soup. I look in the freezer and I didn't have too many things to put in my soup. So I said, oh, it won't be anything nice with all the meats and stuff. So no need to call her. So I went in the kitchen. I took all my meats that I was going to use. I put it in a big bowl. I seasoned it. So that was the first dish that I put in the sink. And as I was cooking and doing stuff, I kept throwing it in that bigger bowl. And then as I was cooking, I heard a knock to the door and it was my friend. She had gone to visit somebody in the building. And as she was going home, she decided to see if I was home. So she came and knocked to the door, home, my mom's house. So she came and knocked to the door. And she said, oh, I smell something. I said, oh, come in. It's not much, but come. When it's ready, we can eat. So she came in, sat down. We were laughing, talking. After we ate, then she said she was leaving. So I decided I would go and wash all the dishes, take my bath to go to bed. So I go in the kitchen. My mom is fast asleep. And I start to wash all the dishes. And when I come to the last bowl which was the first thing I put in the sink there was a penny and there was a dime in the bowl sitting in water and I freaked out so I called her because I had told her what happened and I said would you believe in the bowl and I know she didn't go in the kitchen or do anything she didn't even leave she was sitting right on the chair while we we're talking so she asked me because usually back home when you get a house you will bring pastors to pray for the house and oh and she was like oh maybe um somebody need to come and pray maybe something is going on so she told me that i should talk to her pastor so she gave me her and she's a woman of god also so she gave me her pastor number and i called him So, I was waiting for him to call me back. A couple of weeks later, I go to work. And one of my clients came and she said, what's going on here? Are you keeping dimes? And I was like, keeping dimes? She said, two weeks ago when I came, I saw one dime sitting by your chair. She said, when I came last week, I saw two. Now you have three. And that's the way that we clean all the time. When I looked down, I saw three times. So, but then I had told all my, my family, my siblings, I was like, I don't know what's going on. At that time, the pastor hadn't called me yet. So, my side hustle those days, I was selling African uh, dresses and materials and hats and all kinds of stuff. So, while waiting for the pastor to call me, this lady I know called me and said they were having a revival at her church. And so she wanted me to come and bring my things to sell. So I went to the grocery store. I had gotten my uh, food and brought it home. And I asked my son, I was like, oh, take all the things out of my car, the grocery, please. And then pack my suitcase so I can take it to sell. He had just bought a car. And he said, oh, mom, I'll take the, the grocery out, but just take my car. I'll put my suitcase in my car and you can go. That's a brand new car. 
unlike my car that was old. So he puts the suitcase in there and I go to the um, occasion. So I was telling the lady that invited me about what was happening. She said, oh, there's a man of God that is here and maybe you should talk to him. Maybe he will tell you what's going on. Maybe he has some idea of why money is just all around you. So I didn't talk to him, but after the revival, she talked to him. So he came outside to ask me what was going on. When he came outside and started to talk to me, I was packing up to leave. So he decided to walk with me into the car. So I rolled a suitcase, we get to the car, and he said he would call me later as soon as I popped the trunk to put the uh, suitcase in, I saw a penny and a dime. So he took it, he looked at it, he was kind of stuttered, he took it and put it in his pocket, and he said, okay, so I will pray and I will call you. After that happened to me, my sister called me. And she said, you know, the money that was following you has started to follow me. I said, what happened? She said, you know, I got up in the morning and she's a teacher. She said, I got up in the morning, I have put my clothes on and I was in school all day. And she said, she had a um, parent teacher conference at five o'clock. So the person came, she talked to them and as they were about to leave, they asked her, they say, can I ask you a question? And she said, sure. And the person said, is there a reason that you have a nickel stuck on your clothes? And she was like, a nickel stuck on my clothes? So she started to look, she said, yeah, on your pants. And she said she practically had to peel the nickel off of her pants. She didn't know where that nickel came from. She had been with it the entire day teaching. Then a couple of days later, she came in her class and one of the students had spilled something on her desk. So she decided she was gonna clean it. So she sprayed it, she cleaned the desk, she wiped it, she had moved her bag and put it aside, she wiped it. And she decided now that it's dry, she's gonna put all her things back and she see a nickel sitting on her table. So that really spooked me out. So waiting, eventually the pastor called me back. This is the crazy part. So the pastor called me back and not the pastor that I had gone to when I went to the revival, but the first pastor that I called for my friend that was in the building, her pastor called me back. And so I explained everything. And the first thing he said to me, I see that you're traveling and i didn't tell a lot of people i was traveling so i was shocked i told my family because of my mom so we had to improvise to have them to spend more time with her while i was gone so i was shocked that he knew and he said he told me some stuff and then he said oh don't worry about all that money that you're finding it's nothing evil he said um he also told me that he saw some things that he wanted to share with me. One of the things he said, oh, somebody I was gonna meet. He said, oh, when you go on your travels, after your travel, you're gonna meet somebody. And he explained some scenarios to me. And then he stopped and he said, oh, so this, this incident happened, it's been about five years since it happened. So then he tells me, he said, I see in three years, you're not gonna be living in the U.S. And I was say, what? And I'm not gonna be dead? He was say, no, 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 you're not gonna be dead, but you're not gonna be living here. And then he said, oh, I see you're gonna be rich. And not just rich, but you're gonna be rich, rich, rich. He said, and that's why you're not gonna be living here. And he said, and I want you to know that when you get your money, tie in my church. Everything else he was telling me, I didn't hear it. All I was hearing was rich and rich, rich, rich. And so I was like, oh my God. So I'm gonna, this money is telling me I'm gonna be rich. Three years came and passed. It's five years, I'm still not rich. <laughs> so I never found out what happened and eventually the money just stopped showing up and that was it. But 
also when i say some strange stuff that happened to me my house when i got it it was haunted and that has gone away so i don't know what's going on but tell me have you had any kind of crazy experiences things that you just can't explain let me know if i'm the only one me and my sister are the only ones that this stuff went on with so anyway thanks for watching please subscribe to my channel hit that notification button and i'll finish my queen of rice and i'll see you guys later bye bye